I got a question here asking, I'm a senior aiming for top law schools and consistently scoring a 170 on my practice test. However, I'm increasingly concerned about score inflation and the competitiveness of my LSAT score. Is a 170 still considered competitive or should I be aiming for a higher score to stand out? Additionally, how can I further refine my prep strategy to potentially increase my score beyond 170? So yes, score inflation is real. There is no denying that. And a 170 isn't what it used to be. In fact, the LSAT medians at all top 14 law schools are above 170. And Yale's most recent LSAT median is a 175. So yes, a 170 may not be enough if you're looking for top law schools, including T14s. So why is there score inflation? There's a couple of reasons. One is, of course, the previous LSAT formats, including the LSAT Flex, made it easier for students to get high scores because the LSAT was shorter. It was only three scored sections, no experimental sections, and LSAC underestimated how much better students would do on the LSAT with a shorter format, having the comfort to take it from home and the pandemic giving a lot of students more time to study. Another little discussed factor that is a little bit controversial, according to some people, is that LSAC has become a lot more liberal in granting accommodations. Far more students are getting extra time accommodations and stop-start breaks than in the past. Students are getting time and a half, they're getting double time. Some students are even getting up to 160 minutes per section with accommodations. When under standard timing, they're only getting 35 minutes. So all these students are getting far more time than they used to, and sometimes more time than they need is making it easier for them to get higher LSAT scores. So if you are looking to go to a T14 law school and you don't have URM status, meaning you're not an underrepresented minority, then I would recommend aiming for an LSAT score significantly above the medians. In fact, no matter what, I would always aim to get above the medians, but that's especially important if you want to go to a T14 and you don't have URM status. So you're going to want to have a 175 or above, ideally, if you're targeting schools like Yale, Harvard, and Stanford. And after all, Yale's median, as again, as I said, is a 175, meaning that half of those going to Yale Law School had LSAT scores above 175, and half of them had scores below 175. But also consider, what's your GPA? The T14 GPA medians are typically going to be 3.8, 3.9. So if your GPA is below a 3.8 or 3.9, and you want to go to a T14, that means you're going to want to have an even higher LSAT score to balance it out and counteract the relatively lower GPA. Also consider that many students experience a test day drop relative to their practice test scores. So if your PT average, if your practice test average is around a 170, you may actually score a little bit lower on test day due to the stress and nerves of the real thing, or maybe you have, have a bad proctor, maybe you have tech issues. And so I would love for you to be at at least a 173 or 174 in order to safely score a 170 on test day itself, I want you to have a little bit of that buffer there. And then of course I'm recommending aiming to score higher than 170 for the T14 schools. So maybe you wanna have your PT average around 175 or 176 in order to safely end up at 172 or 173 on your worst day ever and still be in the running for the T14. Now you asked how to refine your prep strategy to potentially increase your score beyond the 170 mark couple thoughts here, and by the way, I specialize in working with students aiming to score 170 plus. If you're interested in finding out more about potentially working with me, you can check out the links below to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. So increasing your score beyond 170, typically at this point, it's not about trends in certain question types, meaning you're not laboring under some big misconception regarding ordering games or grouping games or a certain type of logical reasoning question like parallel or method of reasoning. You're not really seeing a whole lot of trends at this point because you're just getting questions wrong because they're hard. Students who score in the 170s typically get perfect on games, maybe minus one, and they're losing most of their points on the other sections, meaning logical reasoning and reading comp. So I would love to make sure that you are solid on games. You're not getting any questions wrong there. You're consistently getting perfect sections there. And then with logical reasoning and reading comp, we're going to look at what are the tough questions you're getting wrong. You're probably primarily getting wrong questions that are level four or level five in difficulty, meaning these are the toughest. And so it's not about the question stem type, it's rather about the method of reasoning in, say, the stimulus for logical reasoning. I want you to be reviewing your mistakes in depth. I have a framework for this called the Socratic Review Method, where I ask you a series of guiding questions to help you pinpoint exactly what's holding you back. Is it a misunderstanding of the stimulus, the question stem, or the answer choices, tempting wrong answers, unappealing right answers? I wanted to help you 
write out your thought process to articulate it to make sure that you are leaving no stone unturned and you can properly extract the key takeaways and insights from your review process to apply them to your studying moving forward. Anyway, folks, that's all for now. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. And in the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.